you know? Yeah. So I figured we'll just go with what we got. But man, that's quite the studio you got back there, man. I'm loving it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is my, uh, this is where I do mastering and where I write music and stuff like that. Right on, right on. Well, I love the orange. Uh, I, lo I love those because uh, there's those speakers and whatnot because that I'm looking at maybe getting my son one. My son wants, my one son wants to get into the bass. My other son's playing the piano, but my one son in the Air Force, he wants to take up the bass. So I almost thought about hitting up Doug just to see, uh, what should I get him, man? You know, cause he's, you know, he's, he's a beginner, you know, I don't want to break the bank on anything crazy, but uh, at the same time, I want to get him something that'll be able to play for a long time, you know? And so that was just my starter bass, you know? There are a lot of options that are affordable these days. A lot of really good stuff that doesn't cost a whole lot nowadays. I was looking at the Schecter. Yeah. They kind of nice. blew my skirt up a bit, you know. I thought it was sexy looking. I mean, I wanted to go with a nice Fender, you know, a nice Fender Jazz. But, my God, they're so expensive. You know, yeah, for me. They, yeah, you, yeah, they cost a little bit. You know, but uh, all right. Well, I could I could just bullshit with you all day, but, you know, let's just get into it. I want to introduce you properly to the Rock Titan audience out there and talk all things shades and, you know, whatever else may creep up. But ladies and gentlemen, I am Scotty J and you're watching Rock Titan. And I am joined by one of the most respected guitarists in the industry. And, uh, you know, like Ty and I were talking a little bit before we got kicked off here. Of course, we've had... Doug Pinnock from King's X on the show a number of times, and uh, it's only fitting that we finally catch up with Ty Tabor here as he's got his new solo album out right now, Shades, and it is awesome. Ty, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thank you. Appreciate man. you having me. Oh, absolutely. So I'm looking over just your solo work because everybody, you know, King's X, that they know you well, you know, as well as some other projects that you've worked on, of course. But uh, is this your 13th solo album? Is that what I saw? Um, the truth is, uh, I'm not sure what all albums are being counted because I've put, out some, <laughs> um, I've put out some unofficial releases also. So the truth is the number is probably higher than that, but okay, uh, maybe official releases. I'm, I, I would have to go back and look. I'm trusting them that they... They counted correctly. Well, you know, <laughs> you never know about Wikipedia, you know, or anything else. Now, of course, this solo release you put out is with Rat Pack Records, which uh, I know Doug in his work with KXM. And, and, and maybe I'll touch on that a little bit because I thought that's kind of funny because I busted his stones about, you know, playing with George Lynch and Ray Luzier. And it's like, well, how do Ty and Jerry feel about that? You know? oh. but, but of course, you have your own thing, too. But Rat Pack, they are a great label how awesome is it for you you know just you know to be able to express your creativity to have free reign to do what you want to do and then still have a real solid outlet to help promote your work how much do you love working with rat pack uh i totally love it for all of those exact reasons you just said yeah uh, joe is nothing but supportive and we get to uh all of us in, involved in that label or with that label get to freely express ourselves however we want Joe, Joe has never said, I wish you would do this, this or that or whatever. I just give him what I give him. And sometimes I, I hope it's something that he wants to put out because a lot of times it's not maybe as heavy or aggressive uh, in some ways as a lot of stuff that Rat Pack puts, puts out. So uh, I never know what he's going to think of the stuff I give him, but uh, he really loved this record and he has played it a bunch and uh, keeps telling me he loves it. So uh, I'm very happy he digs it and that I get to just give him whatever is on my heart at the moment. You know? Right on, right on. Well, again, everybody, we're talking about Shades, which is Ty's newest release right now. It is out. Make sure you go get it. We'll have the links in here, you know, so of course you can go get it if you haven't already gotten it, you know, pre-order ahead of time. But uh, it is definitely worth your audio attention. I'm curious, Ty, how long has this been in the works? Because for all of you musicians, the last couple of years have been absolutely insane. And when usually you all would be touring your nuts off, you know, I mean, touring hasn't really been the kind of option, of course, that you all and we all, you know, as your fans would like. But uh, so you have had a lot of time to write and a lot of time to record. As far as Shades is concerned. I sure have. I've had how long has this been in the works? Well, um, I started 
writing music um, kind of went on a spurt right before King's X went in to record our latest album. And um, I withheld one of those songs that I submitted to King's X. I took it back. And that was Sister Genocide. Uh, okay. So, so that was uh, one song I had written that I had turned into King's X and then just changed my mind. We weren't quite, uh, we weren't quite feeling it yet. Uh, and then uh, we finished recording the album and we were supposed to go to Europe for a while. Right. And uh, a bunch of other touring the rest of the year. And we had to cancel it all just so I could go home uh, for a few months to be with my dad. Mm. And then shortly after that, we went out and did one little thing. We went to uh, on a cruise, you know, went to Florida, did a show and then hopped on a boat, and did a cruise and then came home. Yeah, yeah. And that's the last thing we did. And that was, you know, very beginning of 2020. Mm. So King's X album was finished. And right after that is when COVID shut everything down right after we got off that cruise. So all of a sudden I had nothing but time on my hands, like you said. So my first thought was, I just need to do another album right now. Just hop right on it, keep going. And that's what I did. Just So I just jumped right on it and kept writing. And I resurrected one other older song. Uh, but most of the stuff was uh, written new now that I, you know, I've had time to think about it. There were so many songs being uh, considered that when I whittled it down to the few that it is, a lot of times I have to stop and think which ones were old and new because they came from a whole pile of songs and, and some of them just were older songs that weren't ready yet. And uh, then I went ahead and finished, but I think only one of those ended up on the record and that's the song Shallow and everything else other than the one that I had written for King's X, everything else is pretty much new. All right. Well, Ty, you touched on a couple of topics that I want to follow up with because they're both, at least to me, extremely interesting, as I'm sure they will be to the rest of your audience. Um, you, you talked about how Sister Genocide was something that you had originally thought of as a King's X song. And I talked with Doug about this, too, because I'm curious. It's like when you're when you're writing all of this music, you know, that you're creating, how do you decide what you want to just kind of be your own project, you know, piece of what you're working on, whether it's with another band or whether it's with something you're doing solo? How do you decide whether it, it's going to go there or whether you want it to be part of King's X, which, you know, you and Doug and Jerry have just freaking just been amazing, you know, for decades now. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm just Curious, you know, so why did Sister Genocide ultimately, why, why did you, just, um, why, how did it not make the King's X cut? Uh, strictly because I didn't feel like we were getting it yet. Okay. And, um, right. and that happens a lot of times. I mean, for instance, uh, Pleiades was one of the very first drop B songs I wrote. And it was years before we had a record deal, mm. but it didn't end up on an album until the second album. But we did record it to try to put it on the first album but it just didn't come together so sometimes a song you know it just isn't its time yet sure and uh and the truth is uh those songs that i wrote that i brought to king's x weren't really written for king's x i don't i don't really write songs for anything i just write songs right on. and then whatever project is happening i will turn in whatever i've got and we will make it our own you know in some way and we did try sister genocide it just wasn't happening and I just asked if we could drop it, and everybody said okay. And that's why I decided to put it on my solo album. I felt like my own version was capturing the emotion I wanted on it, and I just wasn't happy with where it went, you know, right in the studio. Right on. Yeah, no, that's cool. And it's funny because Doug had, you know, very similar feelings, you know, that he shared when it, you know, came to, you know, certain songs that he'd written, you know, is this King's X or is this maybe something else? But the, all that said, one thing he said that you just touched on, and, and that's why, you know, it just figures that you guys would be brothers for this long, you know, because <laughs> I, I was joking with him. I'm like, of all the songs that you've written, how many actually made it to the cutting room floor versus those that you scrapped that have never actually seen the light of day that might be amazing, you know? And he just laughed, of course. You know, he's just like, man, you know, I've written so many. Like, there are way more songs, you know, that I've written that have never been played or heard, you know? They just, for whatever reason. Now, 
is it safe to say then that that's the same thing for you? Because you just talked about what made it into shades versus what didn't. So I guess I'm just curious, how many songs have you written that actually didn't make the cut, so to speak? Um, there would really be no possible way to know how many. Um, <laughs> All right. There really wouldn't. There would be no way. I mean, I, I I find stuff that I wrote all the time when I'm going through old files and stuff, songs I completely forgot about. Wow. And they're, they're just countless. So um, on my Patreon channel, I share some of that uh, with some of the upper tier people uh, on the channel okay. because I have so much music that'll never get put out that I'm letting them hear it, basically. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Now, I want to go back to Sister Genocide because that's one of the songs we're talking about that, you know, obviously you made your own. And uh, maybe it might have almost made it to King's X, but it wasn't ready yet. But we know this. It's all good. It's all good. But I love music videos. All right. That is one of the reasons why I originally started Rock Titan. You know, Rock Titan Music Television was the plan, you know, to, to kind of resurrect the glory days of MTV and VH1, if you will, when... Music videos just played all day long on these channels, and that was it. And I mean, and that is how the fans of the bands, you know, could really kind of just uh, immerse themselves in the whole visual element of it. And so this was, you know, a, I love the video for Sister Genocide. And I'm curious, for you as an artist... How much input did you have, if any, into the creative side of that? Or is it one of those things where, as a musician, you're just like, nah, dude, go ahead, you do your thing, and I'll bless it one way or the other? Well, when it comes to the overall vibe and artwork and everything of the record, I definitely had specific feelings about it. Okay. Um, even uh, submitted a few photos to say, you know, this kind of vibe is what I'm looking for. I want something that is... Uh, a bit strange. I was kind of looking for a Toadies vibe, to be honest, like their first album, okay. that kind of a thing. It's just one of the greatest covers ever to me because you see that and you don't know what to expect. And and that's exactly what I wanted the, the artwork and cover to be. Um, and so we went back and forth and I okayed things and, and said yes or no to different ideas. But in general, I just you know gave basic ideas of, of feeling i wanted it to feel a certain way and then i said do whatever you want to to accomplish that feeling and he did he did a great job on the artwork and stuff same with, with the video um i did have you know first right of refusal and everything but i just basically when i saw it said no you're doing the right thing let's go with that didn't really have to say anything yeah ty i concur yeah, so everybody, again, go check out Sister Genocide if you haven't already. It's been out there for like, you know, the better part of a month or so. So it is it is killer. It truly is. Now, is do you have any thoughts of putting out any other uh, music videos? Now, obviously with this one, you weren't necessarily present in it. It wasn't like one of those big theatrical music videos. It was more of what they call these days a lyric video, even though I think Probably a lot of videos back in the day really were lyric videos. But are you looking to do anything more in support of Shades as far as that goes? I've actually got three other videos already recorded. Okay. Um, I don't know if we'll put them out or not. Oh, come um, on, man. Come on, man. You got to do it. <laughs> but most likely they will all end up out there. Yeah, most likely. Right on, man. Well, that's really good to hear. Very cool. So one of the things, you know, when I'm checking out, what you've got going on here, clearly, you know, there's got to be an entourage here, you know, that is playing the bass, playing the drums, do, doing everything else. Or are you, in fact, doing it? What is the rest of the entourage? I don't know. I don't know who else might be playing with you on Shades. Who is it? Um, I, I did the same on Shades as my last album. I played everything on it, all the vocals. Yeah. Wow. So you laid down the bass and, and even the drums? Wow, man. That's really cool. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, a good friend of mine, Vinny Moore, who you may or may not be familiar with. Um, you know, it's funny because like when he puts out his solo stuff, you know, I was I was busting on him. I'm like, all right, well, you know, you, you're, you shred, dude. Like who's who's playing bass? Who's playing drums? 
And I know he's not playing drums. You know, he's got someone playing the drums. But he does pick up the bass, you know, which I thought was very, very cool. Yeah. So, you know, and here you are on Shades, you know, you're doing triple duty. You're doing Jerry's job and you're doing Doug's job, you know. So I guess for you as and a some, guitarist. And, and, some, and some keyboards thrown in there, too, and some extra stuff. You know? Right on. Right, oh, my God. All right. So you really are doing, you did the whole thing yourself. You had no other musicians chime in and help you out with this. Not at all. Wow. That's incredible. So, <laughs> so okay. So, I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I know everything about your history in depth as far as what your first instrument of love was, you know, as proficient as you are in guitar. Um, clearly, clearly, after li listening to Shades, you know, you can, you can throw down some wicked bass and drums. What what in, what instrument did you start on first as a kid growing up? Uh, guitar was what I was always drawn to toward okay. first. My dad played and had a Stella guitar and uh, acoustic, and he went to work. Uh, I used to sit around and I would watch his fingers when he would play. You know, some simple stuff. He would sing to me and my brother when we were real young, and uh, this was before my sister was born. Uh, he did the same thing with her years later. But anyway, he would play music on the acoustic and I would watch his fingers and, I, and this is like really, really young. I mean, this is like, I was probably around five maybe. Oh wow. And he went to, uh, he went to work one day and I, without permission, got his guitar and started, you know, putting, pushing on things and plunking until I found notes that made a G chord and figured it out myself. And I was all proud. Wow, boom, that's a that's a G. You know, I mean, I didn't know what it was called. I just knew it was a chord. <laughs> right. It was a chord, and it sounded right. It sounded great. So when Dad came home, I showed him. Look what I figured out, bling! And he was like really impressed. So then he taught me some of my first, you know, just basic chords. Wow. And uh, that was, you know, and I took it from there and just started trying to figure out what to do. That is so cool. So I guess when did you? pick up the bass, you know, and, and what kind of a transition was that like, you know, going from guitar to bass, you know, cause obviously you're talking about going from six strings to four strings, unless, you know, you're someone like Doug who plays everything up to 12 strings, you know, which I don't even know how that's possible, you know, but, uh, you know, 12 string guitar is daunting enough, 12 string bass, you know, but what's that transition like? When did you do that? Um, well, when I first started writing, uh, and putting down demos in the earliest of days uh, with us, we weren't even called King's X back then. We were called The Edge. Right. And then, we were, and then we were called Sneak Preview for a few years after that. Uh, but during all that time, me and Doug both were demoing just every day, writing stuff and demoing it and everything. So I, I, uh, I can't even remember where I was going with this. What was the initial? Yeah, no, as far as your transition to bass. Well, not oh, a transition, so, so, but like when you started playing, you know? Right. So when I started demoing, that's when I had to start putting down other parts and I didn't even have a bass. So the way I did bass at first was I would turn the tone off on the guitar to make it more oofy sounding mm. and maybe tune the strings down and uh, play a little lower on guitar. And that's how I did bass originally. And then eventually there was this place in town that had a, uh, just a guitar shop in Springfield, Missouri at this time. And I got a bass from there for super cheap, and then just started playing real bass. And the truth is transition to bass is not that difficult f for guitar because it's the same tuning basically okay. as the first four strings of the guitar okay. or the top heavy strings. Okay. So I already had in my head, you know, how to play the notes. The only thing about playing bass is that it's more difficult on your hands because the strings are bigger, you have to push harder, and you know it hurts the fingers worse and stuff like that. Uh, but it really, I really didn't think anything about it. I just knew that I needed to put bass parts down, so I got a bass and started doing it. Yeah. And when it came to drums, I was doing things like, um, like the song Moan Jam. I literally demoed the music to that song, playing drums on a styrofoam box, where I was. <laughs> Where I was thumping one side, it sounded like a kick, and on the top, it sounded like a snare. So I was boom, 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 on the styrofoam box, and then I just played to that, and that was what the demo was. So wow. uh, even drums, I would make shift drums however I needed to for demos, just so that they 
could hear the intended idea. Then we all started getting drum machines and stuff shortly after that. And then all the demos started sounding like real recordings almost. Right on. Right on. Now, one one thing I do want to touch on, um, you know, just your experience with King's X. But, uh, you know, again, everybody, Ty, Ty is the man. So, I mean, you got to go check out Shades. That's what we're talking about. It's out right now. But you know him with King's X. And, I mean, God, I love seeing you guys live. I love hearing you play. I love your vocals. Doug's vocals are absolutely unparalleled. There is no one in the music industry today that sounds like him. I can't even say enough about Doug, and obviously you feel the same way. And where I'm going with it is so many bands, you know, you just fall apart. You know, they just don't survive the test of time, whether they were bands that came out 50 years ago or bands that came out five years ago. I mean, it is very hard to maintain that chemistry and just the personalities, making sure everything is copacetic and just whatever. I mean, drama happens, life happens. You know, and, and things just go awry. But you guys have really survived the test of time. First off, how special is that to you? And secondly, how would how, how has that worked? I mean, how have you been able to keep it together? So again, how special is it to you? And how have you been able to keep it together, in your opinion? Um, as far as how we keep have kept it together, I I have no idea. I, I know. <laughs> I, the only thing I know is that I enjoy playing with Doug and Jerry more than I enjoy playing with anybody else still yeah. to this day. Right uh, when we play, it it reaches a different level than I've ever felt playing with anybody else. And I think we all find that connection and love it, you know, and, and realize how special it is every single time we play. Every time we see the audience and, and them singing every word, you know, it's just a... Uh, it's it's hard to put it into words how special it feels. I bet. Um, so I'm very. We're all extremely thankful we still get to do it, and uh, and that we uh, found each other because um, we all get to play with a lot of great people, and I enjoy every bit of it. I do. I I love playing with other people and how that stretches me in different ways. But when I play with Doug and Jerry, I'm home. Right. I don't even have to think. You know, we know each other so well after this many years that we're comfortable. You know, we can trust each other and it's it's going to work out on stage no matter what we do. At least that's the hope. <laughs> yeah, no, you guys do have awesome chemistry. And again, if for all you folks out there, if you know, especially King's X fans, if you've never had a chance to see these guys live for whatever crazy reason, do it because it is an awesome show. These guys are amazing live, you know, and, and I have to admit, I mean, there are bands that I have loved over time. You know, you hear them on the radio, you buy the, you know, CD, the album, whatever, you know, you listen to it and like, you just love the, the recorded version of it. And then you go and see them live and you're just like, what? Like, what was that? They don't sound anything like what they sound like, you know, recorded and when it's all produced and mastered and everything like that king's x is not the case they are incredible so make sure you definitely go check them out now in terms of new music and and playing live okay so do you have aspirations because i didn't see anything about any kind of tour dates or anything like that for you personally are you looking to get out and support shades live in front of a audience or I don't have any plans to, and even if I wanted to, I'm not, I wouldn't be able to yet. I, okay. I actually suffered an injury oh. a while back and broke a finger on my playing hand that is not healed completely back yet. Oh. And so my playing is limited at the moment, uh, and I'm, but I'm working on it and doing physical therapy. Okay. So it's going to be a little while before I can be back up to par on guitar. But uh, King's X will definitely be out doing shows this year. Um, and we're going to support our upcoming new album also. But I, I don't think there's going to be a chance for me to do anything with Shades just because my hand is not, even if I wanted to, it's just not ready. And King's X is filling up the rest of the year. We're going to be busy. Okay, so if you can't play solo for Shades, how are you playing for King's X? Don't even tell me someone's filling in for you because I don't even want to hear that. 
So what? Well, no, no. We just have been canceling shows. I mean, uh, we we we're not playing yet until we won't play till I'm able to. Good. Um, we're shooting for trying to make the May. We're supposed to do another cruise in May. Okay. We're shooting for that one for me to be ready for that. Right. And that's in. the goal. And uh, so uh, that's that's the intended goal. We'll see how it turns out. All right. And the new King's X music is imminent. It's coming. Oh, man, I'm busting. I'm busting. I know everybody is, too. Because when I caught up with you guys at Sellersville Theater, like we were talking about a couple years back, I know that Doug was like, oh, yeah, it's coming out, like, next week. <laughs> I'm like, what? What's going on? Now, now I'm guessing. I'm just guessing that, uh, you know, the, the craziness of the last couple of years with uh, COVID and everything probably held that up. So this has been done. It's just been more of a strategic timing thing on your part. Um, well, um, sort of, but not totally. Um, okay. We we did finish the the main recording a while back, but after we went home and had had the music for a bit, and and started choosing what's going to be on the record and what's not, um, there was one song we all wanted to be on the record that I just really felt wasn't there yet. Okay, and need needed something else. So I began to work on that on my own for a bit here, and I sent copies of that around to everybody to see what they thought and everybody liked it so we added more vocals and another guitar on that song you know well after the fact after we had finished the album okay and we also spent a lot of time with mastering uh trying different versions and things like that and we did it all at bernie grum and mastering which is a great place but we because we were doing it several times we had to get in and out of there when we could when there was an opening and say, hey, can we just try one more on Thursday or whatever, you know? And it kind of was a thing that ended up taking a long time to get it absolutely finished, uh, you know, the final master and everything. So we haven't actually been just sitting around on it all this time. Uh, it's only been completely finished for about a few months. Okay. So, so okay. this is all coming down to the, about the right timing. Right on, man. And timing, as they say, is everything. And uh, I know I speak for everyone, you know, all of Ty Tabor fans and King's X fans when I say, heal up, dude. You know, I, <laughs> I, I hope things are going well and any, uh, you know, physical therapy that you're having to do is going well because, man, we want to see you guys this summer for sure. I mean, well, that's the plan. God. Oh, my that, God. That is awesome. the plan. I wish I could yeah. join you on the cruise, too. Which cruises are we talking about? We're doing the uh, Close to the Edge cruise, okay. the Yes cruise. Ooh, right on, man. Right on. Okay. All right. That's cool. Well. Probably be a lot of prog up on the boat that yeah, week. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Right on. Well, Ty, thank you so much for joining me on Rock Titan. And again, everybody, we're here with Ty Tabor from King's X, and he's got his brand new solo album out right now, Shades, the Rat Pack Records. Go get it. It is awesome. And uh, you heard it from the man himself. You know, New King's X material is not too far around the corner. And that is going to be amazing, too. Ty, thank you so much. It has been awesome hanging out with you, man. Same here, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. All right. Everybody, I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan. We're out.